Hey everybody, it's me, Art Dallas of Nimble Pros. In this short video, we're gonna look at how to use central package management, how to manually update your solutions to use it, and I'll show you a cool tool that will save you hours of tedious work by doing it automatically for your whole solution. Let's get started. For this example, I'm gonna use the eShop on web reference application, which Microsoft has published for many years, and I was one of the core authors on, and recently, uh, about a year ago, they moved it to a community supported project, which Nimble Pros is now supporting. And so it is still an excellent reference application. It's just no longer in the .NET dash architecture GitHub organization. Instead, you'll find it in Nimble Pros. Now, what I've done is I've grabbed an old version of eShop on web because we, a long time ago, upgraded to central package management. But I wanna show you why, if you haven't done so, you should really think about it. So what is central package management? Well. If you look at any of your projects in here uh, or in your own you know, .NET solution, you'll typically find whatever your NuGet packages are and you'll see that they each have some version with them. And if you've been around for a while, you've probably run into the situation where your versions get a little bit mismatched. And so there's a nice tool in Visual Studio called Consolidate where you can go and look and see, do any of your NuGet packages have that type of mismatch inside your solution? And so I've artificially introduced one here so you can see that my unit test package is using xunit 2.4.1 and my other test packages or projects are using version 2.4.2, right? And now I can use this tooling to say, you know what, I want all of them to use whichever version I pick. Uh, so go to the latest and then install and it'll install this across all those versions. But it's very UI heavy uh, and it, it's kind of tedious and slow to do this approach, especially when you have a lot of them that could be out of sync. The other thing is if you're an open source developer like I am, you may often be getting feedback from uh, a, a bot called Dependabot. And it, what it does is it will open up a pull request every time there's an update. So you see in NuGet Explorer here, you know we have all these different updates because I checked this out. This is almost a two year old version of the code. And so of course in the two years since this code was, was last touched um, or, or this commit of this code was, was made, you can see there's a lot of different updates to things. With Dependabot, you would be getting these different pull requests that would tell you, hey, update this one, hey, update this one. Uh, each one is a separate pull request, often for individual separate projects. And, and that again, gets to be tedious, right? It's just too much, right? It would be nice if we could just update this in one location and all of them would be updated. And so that's what I wanna show you today. All right, so you can find eShop on web here. The actual commit that I'm looking at is from December of 2022, I think, because that's how long we've had this feature. Central package management came out uh, in 2022 and, and we'll see in a second which versions it supports. But the idea is that you would not necessarily specify the version inside your projects. Instead, you would just specify the packages you were using and then in a central location, you would have all the versions. So starting with NuGet 6.2, and we're well past that now, uh, Visual Studio 2022 17.2, .NET SDK 6 or SDK 7 previews, uh, we're are about to be on .NET 9 as I'm recording this. So this is a couple years old, but I know a lot of folks haven't yet embraced it and aren't aware of the benefits that it brings. So when you have central package management, what you're typically going to include in your source control is this directory.packages.props file. And that file is going to have all of the packages that any of your projects use and their version. And it looks something like this, right? And so in here you can add property groups and specify different things that should apply to all of your projects. And then you can specify in here an item group with all your package versions. Now, once you make this change, that means inside an individual csproj file, you can have a package reference that does not include the version. Let's go look at the docs over here as well. This talks about how to enable central package management and some of the rules. So we're mostly gonna look at the package references. You can enable this with manage package version centrally and set that to true, and then specify the individual package versions here. Notice this is package version. Inside your csproj file, it's package reference. It'll be a little nicer if they were the same, uh, because when you go to manually move these, it's it's tedious to have to change it. But you know, I'm gonna show you a tool that does that for you, so it won't be a big problem. There's some rules for how these work. Basically, at your project level or solution level, it's gonna start looking in parent folders until it finds one of these. And the first one it finds is where it will stop. 
So this project is going to look and see that there's a props file right there with it. It's going to use that one. This project is going to look up the tree. It doesn't have one with it, so it'll look up here. It'll find this one. All right, so you can stack these if, if you need to. Usually, I just have one in the root of each one of my source repositories, and, and that works well. First thing you need to do is create this file and then set it to manage central package versions centrally to true. So I'm going to steal uh, an example of the file from right here, let's say, and we'll go over to my eShop on web code here. And in solution items, I can create a new item. So we'll say add new item, and we're going to call it directory packages.props. And I want that to go, I'm not sure it's going to put it in the right place if I do it like this, but we'll see what it does. And then we'll paste this in. All right. Now, I'm not sure that's doing what I want. Let me see where this is. View in File Explorer, is that an option? No, of course it's not. Where are you? I guess we'll go to Properties and see Asia. Yeah, okay, it's in the right place. All right, so that's good. I'm not sure why I'm not getting IntelliSense color coding here. I'm sure there's uh, an option on Properties for that. Okay, so let me just build and see what this does by adding it here. And you'll see it is working. So one of the things that will happen as soon as you add one of these, and you toggle manage package version centrally to true is that you're going to get uh, errors or warnings. Uh, I think, yeah, these are actual errors that say that you cannot specify the version in your package reference. So if we look at this one right here under Blazor shared, it says project using this should not define the version of package package reference items. Uh, and so if we double click on this, we see the issue is that we have this thing specified here. So for me to fix this, what I have to do is remove this. So we're going to control X. But before I do that, I want to put this thing into my package props. So I'm going to take both of these, copy them, go into directory package props, uh, paste them in, look at the fact that they're not package reference They're They're not need to be package version. So we'll change them to package version. Uh, and then eventually I'm going to want to reformat that. Now go back to Blazor share and tediously remove just the version equal attribute of this XML element, right? And then if I build, that's one thing that I've, I've maybe fixed, right? Blazor shared still doesn't like this. I uh, should not define the version of items, but package version items. Let's say that looks right. So I don't know why that's still complaining, but I think this, this should be correct now, right? And everything is now in here. And again, I'm still not sure why Visual Studio is not picking up the, the formatting on this, but it's all right. Maybe I didn't save that one. I think I did though. There we go. Okay, so now Blazor Shared is no longer listed. So maybe I didn't save it. All right, so that is the process. And for, you know, this is a just a small sample app. If you have a real application, you're going to be spending a lot of time on this, right? You go through and you have all these references. Every single one of these, you have to copy over, change package reference to package version, go find the version, cut it out of here, paste it into there, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it's, it's not fun. I've done a bunch of these by hand. How can we do this faster? Well, let's talk about that. The next thing that uh, I want to talk about real quick, though, is that we have a couple of new courses on Nimble Pros Academy. Uh, one is on clean architecture, which is always a super popular topic. If you're not uh, well versed on it yet, this uh, course can help you get up to speed. And then a brand new course on identity essentials, which is in preview mode. So this course is not yet published fully, but you can enroll in it and get an introduction to all the preview content that's available. If you use code early access, all one word as shown on your screen, that will give you a 60% discount off of this course. So that's the best discount you're ever going to get. And when the full course is available, of course, you'll have the full course available for your use. All right. So now let's talk about how we can go ahead and automatically make it use of the uh, central package management in your solution. So there is a great project out there uh, by Vanevel J, Jeroen Vanevel from London. And he's made available this tool, which does exactly what you need. All right, so if we come down here and look at the readme, basically all you have to do is download the binary. And then depending on which OS you're on, you might need to chmod it to allow execu executable permission. Um, but then you just run the thing uh, for whatever folder you're in. All right, so add it to your path and then execute it. Or if you want to cheat, you can just copy it into the, the path where your code is. So well, I've already downloaded this. Uh, if you need it, you can just go here to releases. And there's a bunch of different releases here. There's one for Windows, which is what I'm using at the moment. Uh, or you can you know, go ahead and compile it yourself if you prefer. It is all open source, so you can also just clone the repo and, and do that. But once you've got it, um, let me just jump in here. And so I'm in eShop on web. You can see I'm on this particular commit. And if we do ls, uh, you're going to see I do have this directory packages props file that I just created. I'm going to delete that. Now it's gone. 
Uh, and then I cheated and just put the whole thing in this folder. So directory package props, uh, converter windows.exe dot and we'll hit enter. And it's very quick, right? So uh, it's going to automatically do this. Notice that it saw that there was a difference between my X unit versions. And so in the readme file for this, it explains what its behavior will do if there is a conflict. And so when multiple versions are detected by default, it's going to use the highest numbered version that it finds, uh, which is probably what you want. That, and that's what I would want in this case. All right. So in here, you know, you can see it did that. If we go now at LS, you'll see there is now a directory packages props and it is much larger than the one that I had. If we go back into Visual Studio to take a look, because it should still be here, you can see that now we have all the different versions for every single different package. This would have taken me at least an hour to do by hand. And every one of these project files has been modified. So if you look at each one, you can see it no longer has a version, right? And so just by running that tool, you can save yourself a ton of time and get this set up. Now, if you also are noticing that I've got some cool icons and things in here, I've got a recent video that talks about how you can get that as well. It's called terminal icons. So look for that if you think this looks prettier than your boring gray terminal. Um, but with that, I hope you found this helpful and it'll save you a little bit of time. It'll make it easier for you to manage your NuGet packages. So keep on improving and I'll see you next time. Thanks.